Docker Compose files can be really good to uh, put together lots of uh, services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But sometimes you need to be able to add some form of configuration, i.e., uh, username, passwords, root passwords for your databases, for your login, or whatever. And it's not very nice placing it in these files because everyone can see them. You want to secure a secure way of uh, saving these files. Now this is not the most secure way of doing it, but this is uh, far better than placing them inside of the file. So what we can use is an env file, a .env file here, okay? And whoops. And we can just say in this .env file, uh, the invariables that we want. So if we just come here and we're going to say, uh, then say MySQL user here and David Thorne, and then just say MySQL, password the super strong password anyway is uh, 123456 we can come here and we can wrap this round a dollar and then curly braces here all right and here we can then give the name of uh, the environment variable that we want and we can place this twice and here again and we can then say password oops password there and copy and paste that now so now this is all well and good, but how does Docker know about uh, this here? Well, as long as this .env file is located in the same directory uh, as where uh, the uh, YAML file is located, right? Then it will read it by default. So we can say here, docker compose dash F, and then uh, development, let's just come down a little bit, docker compose, uh, dash f to say the file and we're here we're saying a uh, development.yaml and uh, then we're going to say up all right and we're going to say dash d okay and you can see here that we've got docker dash uh, files underscore local dev docker dash files maria and uh, and so on so we can see that it's loaded and perfectly fine without any uh, problems so let's just come and do docker ps dash a we can see this is our uh, Maria DB. So we can say Docker. Let's just move this over a little bit. Docker execute it the uh, Docker DB. We'll just say bash for the time being. We can come in here now. We can say Maria DB and let's just say dash p for the sake of being uh, the root user. One, two, three, five, six. And there you can see that we have uh, show databases. And you can see here we've got David Thorne, MySQL, we've got all the standard databases. And when we say select a user host from uh, MySQL user, you can see here we've got David Thorne. Uh, we have the user, so it has been added with that information. And just for the sake of, of uh, oops, just for the sake of testing it once again, we can come in here and say uh, MariaDB U, say David Thorne dash P, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can see, see uh, that we can access that and say show databases. And there we only get uh, one database. So this is to show you how we can uh, make it a little bit tidier by using uh, the environment variable. Um, now you can, uh, you, you can basically uh, make sure that this environment variable is only accessible uh, by uh, specific users that can run this docker compose file that can start this as well but that kind of gets into uh, the realms of like file permissions and who who and when can run the uh, docker compose and the users for the containers i don't really want to get into that but that would be your next step uh, to check out is how can you change the permissions to this file uh, how can you uh, set the uh, user and why would you want to set the user to, to that one container, etc., etc. But it's just a nice, easy way uh, for you to be able to do it. And if we wanted to change this one port as well, we could say then DB port, for example, here and come in here and say DB port is then 3306. And there you can see uh, if we uh, just bring it all down again and say docker compose f development down dash v and it's probably going to make some problems here uh, remove orphans as well 
and let's just say docker psa yes and let's just check to see whether the networks have all gone uh, yes and we'll see if the volumes have all gone as well oops volume ls there's no volumes there so if we now uh, run it again and bring it up we can see that docker ps dash a we can see 3306 and let's bring it down again just to show you that we can actually change it in the emp file let's say 3307 bring it up docker ps dash a we don't need dash a but 3307 so you can see that we can we can use this dot emp file and this is this is way cleaner than uh, putting the data with inside of with inside of here too okay um, so uh, you know obviously we are now taking the environment variables from an ent file and passing them as environment variables to the actual database container itself as well all right there's another one that you can add uh, to this is then compose uh, project name let's just make sure we stop all these first let's bring them all down get rid of that and we can say project name and we, let's just say youtube here and when we run this once again you saw maybe before that they were all uh, um, prefixed with docker dash files and we'll just say up here and now you can see that we've got youtube dash local underscore dev youtube dash maria uh, db underscore dev and when we bring these down again and we remove this and we bring it up if you haven't seen this already now you can see docker dash files underscore local def that's because the uh, folder here is called docker dash files um, we could also uh, say here um, say here uh, tester one right instead and then we run this we get tester one and if we undo uh, this in a uh, YouTube as well. Well, let's just take that back and uh, bring this down again, and then we can uh, bring this. Whoops, we want compose project uh, name is equal to uh, YouTube. So we save that, and now uh, if we uh, run this again with then the p tester one. You'll see here that we get a uh, tester one um, tester one is what uh, the, the 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 setting that is uh, used and let's just bring them all uh, down again and uh, remove orphans here too say so docker ps to show what is actually uh, running and you can see here that because uh, we change the names of stuff let's say this here get rid of that we need to force it to remove it docker ps to a docker volume ls yeah you, you've got to be you've got to be careful about when you change stuff okay you've got to make sure that you uh remove these things uh or change things after you've bought everything down so let's just say the network once again ls and we can see that's still here so docker network remove that one's now removed so we should all be now removed and here we have now docker compose uh, dash f developments and let's say dash p uh, tester or one and uh, up and dash d all right now you can see we've got tester one and if we uh, just for the sake of of doing this once again we say here uh, down dash v uh, remove uh, orphans right here you can see here youtube maria db uh, brought it down all right so this is the point i'm trying to make to you is that when you bring down right you need to also bring down with the tash uh, the the uh, tester one two whoops that was in the wrong place my mistake you need to make sure that you uh whoops dash p down oh there we go that's better and you'll see here it brings it all down so if you use dash p in the beginning you've got to use dash p at the end all right so it's it's kind of like yeah you you've um the the best way to do it really is to have it with inside of the emp file now you can also put it inside of uh, here too so if we provide a name here and say youtube one 
this is going to be checked last, basically. So the uh, dash p is going to do first. The dash env is going to, or this this environment variable is going to come second. Uh, this name is going to come third. Uh, so the, the dash p will always take precedence uh, over the other ones. So this is how to use the environment uh, the dot env file, and you can also use it. Uh, you can part, place the file elsewhere too, uh, but I'm not going to go over that. With that said, I hope you've got something out of this one video. I hope uh, you've uh, learned something. If you have, then it would be really nice if you give it a like. Or if you've got any questions, feedback, or concerns, anything like that, then uh, let's start a conversation in the comment section down below. If you like this comment, this content, and you think that you want to uh, watch more of my uh, videos, then check out my uh, YouTube channel and uh, all of the other uh, files, the videos about Docker, about Linux, about programming. Uh, if you want to hear about my time in Germany, then there's also some videos there or some other videos about Bristol Dortmund, drone flying. There's a whole array of different uh, topics on my channel. If this is for you, then why not think about subscribing? If not, the sheer fact that you're watching through to the end is already something that I'm really happy about. With that said, thank you very much for watching. My name is David Thorne. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.